Hey guys, I uh, hope everybody's staying sane during the, the lock-ins and all that kind of stuff. Um, so today, this is going to be kind of like a follow-up on the power plenum. And I think in my last video I mentioned something about my gun might look a little different in the new video. And this is, this is the same gun, believe it or not. Uh, the bullpup has made a transformation like a moth into a, or like a caterpillar into a beautiful butterfly. Not saying that the bullpup, bullpup was ugly, but, uh, I, I like, I like the bullpup a lot. Um, it was, it's a great woods walking setup. The balance on it's awesome. Um, I just wanted something like this thing. I do a lot of tuning. So being, having access to the hammer adjuster and the regulator without taking the stock out, uh, I liked a lot. And I do a lot of bench shooting, so having something that was a little bit more kind of suited to bench shooting made sense. Um, so anyway, that's the that's the setup. Um, so this is a full full conversion. Um, this is the Sandsock Arca Swiss Rail from Utah Air Guns. Um, for the lower, I got the Ergo D DXL Deluxe. Sure grip, something like that. This is the really large one. I didn't realize I was getting this super gigantic one, but I actually kind of like it because it gives me a nice separation on the trigger. Um, I had a Magpul slim grip on here, and it, it put my finger real close to the trigger guard. And we've got a nice, nice butt stock on the back here with sling straps and all that stuff. It's all M locked out, ready to rock and roll out in the field. Um, so that's just, uh, I'll do a video kind of more going over what all I did to the gun, how I got it to this point, what it takes, if that's something that you're interested in and, uh, some of that kind of stuff. But, but today we're going to be talking more or less performance and power plenum, which everybody has a lot of questions about and, um, something else that I, I've come, come across, which is, let me go ahead and fire up my other camera here. Alright, so you're just going to be staring at pellets mostly through this, or slugs through this camera. But, uh, let's see here. You can see the dual hole Huma transfer port much better in this. So this is what I have. This is my 22 or this is my 25 barrel. Currently, we're chambered in 22 caliber with a 600 mil barrel on here. Um, slug liner, all that stuff. If you've never seen any of my other videos, this is a 22600 setup with, with slug liner, and this is a 25 with slug liner uh, setup. And currently, I have these dual hole transfer ports installed on both my barrels. Um, really liking those a lot. I've really, I'd initially done some small porting with a, a Dremel, and uh, I got you know, a power increase, but this is, this is definitely noticeable, especially with the power plenum. Um, let's see here. Unlock my screen again. So when you're, if you install one of these, this is what I kind of did. Let me get this to where you guys can see it here. Is you'll want to put your probe in, and you'll notice when, it, when it's lined all the way up, the light's not real good, but you can kind of see the edge of the pellet probe, there's some silver inside of there, and the same on the front. And so what I did is I just kind of eyeballed that and then ground out on my pellet probe basically right here, just on this edge, and ground it back this way a little bit, and same right here, and just kind of widened this gap out on either side so that it matched up the same diameter. I guess you could even just stick it right here and see that it's it's a little narrower. So the 22 needed more work uh, than the 25. The 25 pellet uh, probe is not too much smaller than the enlarged dual wool Huma transfer port. The 22 one was quite a bit smaller. So I did grind that out. So the pellet probe that's in here has been modified to match the dual hole transfer port that's installed on the barrel 
And then other than that, it's just the power plenum has been installed. Uh, still running the stock FX regulator, um, so no Humareg mods there. Um, then the rest of it's pretty much just aesthetics. This started out as a, this was like a full-blooded Gen 1 uh, Dreamline, so this still has, I believe, like a lighter hammer weight, maybe, um, and hammer spring than uh, the ones that came out after the 30 cals were available, but I'm not 100% on that, so I'll have to double check. Anyway, um, so the ammo, currently uh, our compressor took a crap, so I'm back to hand pumping again for a little while, so uh, I kind of detuned my gun. I have a video clip that I'm going to throw in here of two 10-shot groups, one with a 21 grain, and one with a 25 grain um, to kind of show uh, what the power potential is on this if you wanted to go towards the hotter side and this tune is going to be more towards efficiency with still a lot of power um, this isn't like detuned by any means and I'm not shooting slow I'm just shooting lighter weight slugs that take less air um, so right now I have my regulator tuned to 130-ish bar. Let me use my little camera if I can unlock the screen here. And swing you guys around. And so, get it at the right angle there so you can see it. So we're at about maybe 100 and 135 bar, um, about on there. And we're gonna be shooting these 217 20 grain TCs, sorry for my handwriting, this is just a test tin. Um, and I'll weigh these real quick so you guys know that these are in fact 20 grains and I'm not pulling a fast one shooting like 16 grain slugs. For those of you guys who don't know, we do make 16 grain slugs, but these are 20 as you can see. So this is the TC base. Um, set this back down here. So this is a different version of a hollow base, basically. Um, instead of it being uh, a real deep hollow base, this is a, a sharper kind of taper. It's got much thicker walls to it, um, which enable it to handle some higher pressures in the barrel. Um, the standard hollow points that we have are really kind of made for like 35 foot pound and under type stuff um, where you don't have you know a real high pressure air blasting them out of the barrel they don't do well with muzzle blast and if you have a really intense muzzle blast like say it's not even necessarily a real high power gun but it's still putting out you know some decent power in a short barrel like uh, my Gamma Urban's a good example. That's a that's a full on carbine. That's a 14 inch barrel, and you know it's still getting a slug up to about 800 feet per second. But they don't the hollow bases don't like that because it's just too much air pressure, and they tend to deform. Whereas these TC bases, these things do really well. Um, they like going fast. In my other video, I hadn't done any tuning. This was really just as soon as I got this thing put together and I started doing some testing just to see where it was at, which was about 140 bar with a really heavy hammer. And uh, I figured, you know, we'll just get some power numbers and see what, we shoot, what we're shooting. And it came out to about 49, maybe foot, 50 foot pounds um, without going crazy. That was at 140 bar. Uh, since then, I kind of wanted to tune to a a lighter slug and see what kind of shot count I could get with a lighter slug still going fairly fast. And so I started experimenting with these uh, 20 grain TCs and I'm able to get these around 950 uh, with a lot of play left in my hammer spring. I'm actually shooting my think on the B setting and we're getting around 950 with like maybe a three to four foot extreme spread. Um, and shooting really well. I got a video uh, that I'll, I'll put in here of, I think I aced like five paintballs in a row out of six 
I missed the first one like four times because I kept shooting over the top of it because I forgot that I was zeroed for a heavier slug. <laughs> and so I shot over the top of it like I think three or four times. And once I figured out where I was hitting, I smoked like I think five paintballs in a row at 50 yards on a windy day, um, which is which is pretty good, especially for a lightweight little slug that's at 20 grains. Um, I was pretty impressed. So today, um, I was originally planning on doing like a whole series of multiple, excuse me, shot strings with this, but since the compressor broke, I'm not gonna empty my gun out like multiple times uh, to just get shot data on it at the moment. What I can tell you from what I was doing during the filming of this is I was able to get around 42 to maybe 45 shots at 950 um, with these 20 grain slugs, which is really good. I think I was right at 40 foot pounds. Um, so, I mean, not a whole ton of energy, but still a lot more energy than most of your 22 air rifles are putting out shooting pellets at a stable um, speed. So, you know, it's a real flat trajectory with a lightweight little slug, and it was pretty efficient at like 45 shots per fill, I think is is totally respectable. Um, and, you know, you could obviously tune it down even further and get even more shots. Um, so, all in all, the power plenum, I think, is definitely a no-brainer. I'm probably going to order another one so I can put two power plenums on here when I put my 30 cal barrel on. And, uh, yeah, we'll make another video doing that. So, um, I guess... We covered the transfer ports, the plenum, the pellet probe mods. Um, I guess other than that, there's just really a whole lot to talk about with the Dreamline itself, but we'll do that in another video. Um, so there's going to be kind of a montage of, you know, some different times I was shooting, trying to put this all together in one video, then our compressor broke, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to show them what I got, and uh, we'll do some other do some other testing, but I'll take you guys downstairs. We'll shoot some groups with the uh, with these 20 grains, and um, just give you guys some overall numbers. Um, so, hopefully, you enjoy this. Hopefully, this answers some of your questions. I think the efficiency on this, you can get some good efficiency and good power. Um, one of the things that I'll, I'll say in my personal opinion that I like the most about the Power Plenum is it takes the stress out of the gun to get the same kind of performance. Um, so looking back at some of my other videos, I was shooting like a 24 grain slug at like 880 is where it was kind of shooting stress free. And 880 is a respectable speed. You know, that was like 38 foot pounds, uh, something like that. Maybe 40 foot pounds. Mm, 38, I think it was like 38 foot pounds. My memory serves me correctly. And with this, I'm able to easily shoot a 24 grain at like 930 um, with no stress and get a better shot count and better accuracy, better harmonics. The gun behaves better. Um, and I can push this all the way up to 50 foot pounds without, again, putting any stress on it, without pushing the reg over 150. Um, which I wouldn't recommend, you know, honestly, I've seen some people cranking these and I was one of them and I shattered the valve in this thing, um, completely, you know, and I was running at about 165. I seen somebody tuning their Dreamline with a power plant on it to 170 to see what, what they could get the top speed of a JSB 18 grain up to. And they topped out at like 1,060. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I can get 1,080 out of this at 130 bar, maybe 140 bar. So you don't need to go to 170. The only reason that you're even getting that kind of speed is because you're shooting a light pellet and the little tiny bit of air that's able to escape the valve at 170 is just enough to launch a lightweight pellet really quickly. But if you put some heavy lead in there, you're going to find out that you're actually not gaining as much power and you've actually lost power from where you were at maybe 140 to 145 bar, where your valve can open and close all the way. So take it from somebody who's already broken their valve, I would not recommend going in excess of 150 bar. 
unless you add weight to your hammer. If you add some weight to your hammer, then, you know, this is just my theory, but I think that the valve would be able to open and dump more pressure out of the regular, or out of the uh, plenum, so that when the valve closes, it closes more gently, and it's not beating the crap out of your valve. Where the current stock setup, if you start to get up to 150 bar, even maxed out, it's not it's not depleting the plenum all the way, and you still have a really high pressure left over in the plenum. And when that pressure closes the valve, it's violent, and you can feel it in your gut. It starts to get real jarring. Um, so if you've experienced that, or you're currently experiencing that, I would highly recommend you detune your gun before it breaks. Um, not saying that it will break, but you know, you're at the threshold where you're putting more stress on the parts than you probably should be. And I, it's my personal opinion, you're probably not getting uh, the performance to justify it. Um, at least I've been able to get better performance at lower pressures. That's all I'm saying. Um, so, anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoy the following footage and clips. Uh, sorry, it's not going to be more thorough um, when I get my air comp when we get the com next compressor up and running. Um, I'll be able to do a lot more shooting. I've also got a new SCBA like three liter tank I think coming. It'll be here Wednesday. I'm really excited about that. So it'll be even more shooting but we got to get the compressor up and working again. So um, if you guys have any comments or questions, please leave them below. Um, you know, like it, subscribe it if you're into this kind of stuff and you want to see more, more of this. Um, I'm always trying to make my videos a little bit better and do a little bit better uh, job um, compiling the information in a way that makes sense. So um, I'm trying to make each video better than the last one, basically. Uh, so... It'll, it'll keep getting better and better, and hopefully at some point it'll actually be entertaining. But um, the next video that I got coming up that I think I'm going to be working on is going to be what it took to do the conversion on the Dreamline um, from, you know, it being a bullpup. And for those of you guys who go, there's no way. On there's the bullpup stock. So that's what this used to be as of last week, maybe the week before, um, and now it's full blown tack. So if you're curious on how I did that, what it takes, um, it's really not all that difficult. There's a bunch of parts, little parts that you have to order because you got to build a new trigger. But this video is going to get real long if I start talking about that. So off to the range. All right, hey guys. So we're down in the garage. Uh, we'll go ahead and load up some sluggies here. So these are the same 20 grainers that I showed you guys on camera upstairs. Um, there's nothing real special about these. These are just solid lead hollow points. These aren't like LDCs or anything. It's just a new base for the 217 that we have and this has been one of the best uh, high-speed slugs that's lightweight that I've found yet. As far as finding something in that 20 grain range, even the 19s seem to do pretty good. Um, but currently, anybody that's purchasing standard hollow bases will be getting a sample pack of 20 of these TC bases to try out because we've been having real good success with them. Um, in our rifles is just as far as uh, speed, they seal well in the barrel so they're nice and efficient and you can get a lighter weight slug that's still going to perform well at higher speeds which has been kind of a struggle in the past. Alright, so we got full mag loaded up, 18 shots. So my target's 50 yards uh, from from here, you guys can see the chronograph. This thing's gonna read out. I'm gonna actually move you guys in, so you probably won't be able to see me too much. But I want to get you to where you can read the screen, hopefully. And uh, 
you guys don't need to see me too much, I don't think. <laughs> so, we'll get this focused up for you guys to see that pretty good. So, um, I got like five or six paintballs set up down there. So we'll do like a 10 shot group and uh, you guys will see the spread and we're gonna shoot all of them over the chronograph. Hopefully they all register as I aim for some other targets. But, um, so this is the tune I'm running on right now. This is 130 bar roughly, maybe 132 bar. And I've got my hammer spring tuned pretty far back. I'm on hammer setting B right now. So, all right. Camera fired up here. And we'll let it rip. All right. Go for the corner of this box here. Zoom in just a touch. So I definitely pulled a few of those. <laughs> See if I can't smoke a few paintballs. Go camera. Well, that was horrible. Probably should have taken some more damn shots at the target. This thing is giving me fits. Anyway, I hit one. To, uh, I got another video I'll throw in here where I did much, much better. Uh,
try for some paintballs at 50 yards. The 20 grain TC base going 950. So like I said guys, this is just on hammer setting 4. So she's got some more left. Shaking all over the place. Breathe. Those actually, for some reason, I might have to adjust my tune. Those are shooting pretty hot. Um, those didn't do as good as they did last time. I might shoot another group and turn them down a little bit. Um, I have not done much tuning. Um, if you guys haven't watched any of my other videos, this was previously a bullpup up until last week. Um, I just put this conversion together. 
in the last, like the last like four days. So there's a lot of new parts on here. Um, I have not had a chance to do a real thorough tuning yet. Um, but we'll try some 25 grains next. We're going to click the power up to five. So this is a 25 grain slug. Let me do the right corner of this, or the left corner of this box this time. Oh, I guess I'll just do that one. So that was 10 shots, just to kind of show you the uh, power capability. That's a 25 grain slug going 940 feet per second. Um, and that's not even on max. Um, so, and keep in mind, that's only at like 140 bar. Um, so I'm, I don't have to, like this thing crank super unreasonably high or anything like that. It shoot. All right, so. Real quick, guys, before we go, um, since I, I didn't have a chance to do a full shot string here, let's see if you guys can see this. All right, so we had 27 shots, and that's our spread, which wasn't all that great, honestly. Um, I think I was on the wrong power setting from when I tuned it but it was still pretty close um so that was 27 shots right there focus this back a little bit and on the rifle we are at get this to where you guys can see it hopefully 162 bar and my reg is right at about 130, focus that a little bit better, so it's right about at 130 bar. So I still got 22 bar left of air above my reg at 27 shots. So I'm getting roughly like right around 40 to 45 shots per fill with this tune, um, which at you know 40 foot pounds, is definitely pretty good and there's a lot of I mean this isn't tuned maxed out by any means it can go up quite a bit higher than that um, this is just kind of I had a lot of people asking me about what kind of shot count to expect so I wanted to do a demonstration of you know at a lower power that's still good 40 foot-pounds is plenty enough to hunt with do anything with um, that you can get a pretty good shot count with this rifle, even at a pretty stout power. Um, if you want to go up to like maybe a 50 foot pound tune, then at 50 foot pounds, I was averaging around, I think I was getting like 28 shots solid before I would, I would drop off the regulator. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, you know, kind of, you can decide whether or not you'd have a lower shot count and higher knockdown power for bigger game. Or if you don't need that, then you can turn your gun down to 130 bar and get 40 foot pounds and, you know, shoot a 20 year range slug at, you know, 940, 950. And that's not even on maximum hammer spring. Like I can shoot this a lot faster. Um, 
I just kind of wanted to show you guys what it was doing with like a mild setup. Um, so, all right, we go edit this and get this on the internet for y'all. Um, if you guys got any questions, you know, as always, leave them in the comments. I'm happy to answer answer them. Um, like I said, I think uh, up next we'll be doing maybe some conversion videos. Uh, I'm going to be doing, once we get a compressor running again, um, we're going to be doing a 100-yard video series with some different slugs. We've got a whole bunch of different, you know, slugs that I want to run through in 22. we got some new hollow uh, reweighted boat tails that are uh, I've been wanting to try out. And with the added power plenum, I'm able to push, you know, 26 grainer at around like, I think, uh, let's get them up to like about 930. Um, but easily 915 was, was really achievable. It was kind of finicky getting them up to like 940, but, um, you know, I could get them up to about 920, not too bad. And with a 26 grain boat tail, that's going to haul its energy a long ways, very efficiently with a good BC. So, um, Curious to get those guys out to the range, do some tuning and testing with that. That'll be upcoming once we get our air supply figured out. And um, yeah, Dreamline conversion video, um, all that kind of good stuff. So, and in the future, if Pyramid ever gets my barrel in stock, I've got a 730 mil, three cal barrel uh, coming for this guy. So we'll be installing that, testing some 30 cal slugs with it. Um, hopefully next weekend I'll be done testing with the 22 and I'll be swapping back over to the 25 setup, modify the pellet probe, get that barrel back installed and uh, we'll run through, we got the TC base, we've had it in 218 for quite a while, um, but now we have it in 217 and they're, they're working really well and they're really efficient. So. Um, Another thing I'm really excited about is we have the same base in the 25 caliber. Um, because the 25 caliber hollow base for me, they shot good at low speed, did not shoot very good at high speeds. So um, hopefully those, those fit the build. Um, do some more tests, and we've had some great feedback from them so far. I'm just hoping this rifle likes them um, so I can shoot a lighter weight slug that's not an LDC for when I'm not hunting. Um, all right, so that's all coming up in the future, so stay tuned, um, subscribe if you want to get notified when a new video comes out, um, yeah, so you guys stay safe, uh, those of you who can, you know, get outside, enjoy the beautiful spring that we're having, we're finally getting some nice weather here, so it's been, it's been nice, I hope, uh, I hope some of you guys are able to enjoy it. Um, if not, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, stay away from crowds. So, till next time, guys. All right, shoot safe, stay straight. Um, shoot safe, stay straight. Shoot straight, stay safe. <laughs> A little Freudian slip there. All right, there you go.